The Motueka River is an iconic New Zealand waterway and for the past 10 years it's been the focus of an intensive study by scientists. The goal of the Integrated Catchment Management or ICM program has been to gain better information to more effectively manage the land, water and coastal environments in catchments where there are many and potentially conflicting land uses and to do so in a way that we understand both the complex way a catchment works and the way people work within it. Conflicts and perceptions of such things as water allocation or worsening water quality mean we need to find new ways to manage our land, water and coasts in an integrated way and to do this collaboratively. Predicting the future, it's something we'd all love to be able to do and as part of the ICM program, advanced computer modelling was used to do just that. The IDEAS, or Integrated Dynamic Environmental Assessment System, was developed to enable scientists to evaluate future scenarios by looking into the future to see what might happen as a result of our management and land use practices within the catchment. Economic, social, cultural and environmental impacts are all considered at once. And as John Diamond, who led this project, says, this was no easy task. It's quite a, a difficult feat because each uh, model is actually very complex and has a, a lot of inputs and depends on so many parameters. So we've had to work very hard on how to get all of these models talking to each other in a way that they can all work together with a particular scenario. There are a lot of different biophysical aspects and uh, for those we had to uh, talk with a lot of biophysical scientists and we were looking at uh, water quantity which is the amount of water that runs off the hills and comes down the, the Mochoeka River. There's also water quality which was the amount of nitrogen and the amount of uh, E. coli bacteria in the water. So we had to talk with the scientists who modelled those things and um, we also looked at the amount of erosion up in the hills and the amount of sediment coming down the rivers economic things we were looking at um, the total uh, economic output from the catchment in terms of um, uh, dairy produce and uh, meat produce and uh, lumping that all together in terms of uh, dollar output but also the profitability of uh, the different uh, economic enterprises and so that allowed us to balance up um, the economic performance of the catchment with the environmental performance. And on the cultural side, we've had uh, a different subcomponent of the IDES model, and that was linking in with the, the local iwi, and they did their own scenarios and their own particular perspectives on the um, catchment performance. IDES modelling required the catchment to be viewed in a new light. In the past, um, we've regarded catchments as, as only being on the land, and uh, but working in the ICM program we realised that there was a lot of interaction between what was going on on the land and out in the ocean as well. So we had to um, model the land and the ocean together and the model does integrate both of those, both of those parts. It's really bringing all the information together into one place. Um, this, is the, this is the difficulty. There's a lot of information, a lot of knowledge, and a lot of models out there, but they're all in different places. And you need to feed that information back to the stakeholders in the catchment. They want to know what's going on and they haven't got access to all this information so it needs to be in one place. So that's the, the main purpose of IDEAS is to bring it all into one place so it's responding to the questions of those stakeholders. Designed to be used by a variety of different stakeholders, the complex model has been developed to be flexible and to provide answers quickly. Um, typically in the past, when you want to integrate models together, it requires a lot of software effort in terms of re, um, redesigning the software so that the models can talk to each other. But our system allows you to have these models talking to each other without redesigning the software. It allows you to get a system going very quickly in a matter of months rather than a matter of years. For the first time in New Zealand, best management practice has been applied to a whole catchment instead of just individual farms. Well, it allows you not just to vary the land use configuration in the catchment, but also to turn on or off different um, best practice managements in the catchment and then evaluate the total impact on the catchment in terms of those triple bottom lines. We found out that by running the model that um, if we looked at the intensive uh, 
land use scenario that that's starting to push the limits of water quality. Um, we can also have learned that if we apply best management practice around the catchment that we can improve the present water quality much more with our present land use. The model also allows the identification of sensitivities in the system. Sensitivities such as water quality, which can suffer from the intensification of horticulture and increased E. coli in the water from more intensive dairying in the area. So it's not just holistically about um, the, uh, the social, economic and environment, but it's also in a spatial sense. So it's not just working at the farm scale, but looking at the whole catchment. And there's an integration of the biophysical as well. So we're talking about integrating the, the land with the river and with the ocean. And that requires a certain amount of holistic integration. Ben Knight is a marine biophysical scientist working for the Coastal and Freshwater Group at Cawthron Institute. His role in the project as a marine modeller has been to use different scenarios generated in the catchment to estimate what the effect on the coastal environment will be. All of the changes on the land eventually end up affecting the sea. Um, so we were interested in the effects on aquaculture, the commercial environment, the commercial use of the sea, and also recreational uses of the sea. Um, and my, my models focused on those aspects. Well, one of my first um, involvement as part of the project was, was looking at the sediment footprint in the marine environment. And out of that work, we, we really got a good feeling for the, the catchment extending out into the marine environment. Um, so we can't really think of the catchment in isolation. We need to think about the, the effects along the coast as well. The, the cow image, I think, is interesting because it, it conveys our farming of the sea, which is this contemporary environment that we live in, um, where we're continuing to make use of our sea resource as we make use of our land resource and, and begin to farm it. Um, and alongside that you've also got traditional ecological issues, so you've got the image of the dolphin and um, I think that represents our sort of our ecological and recreational values of the sea. Um, I think it's a, a really neat image. Turning complex data into readily understandable models can help facilitate the understanding and discussion needed to make informed decisions about the future of the catchment. With marine systems, with other ecological systems, they're, they're quite complex beasts. And to be able to visualise all those interactions and feedback loops can be very difficult, as we see with climate change. Um, so to be able to take all our understanding of the individual parts of that system and weave them together so that um, conceptually they make sense, um, we, can, we can weave quite a simple story out of all these complex threads. It, it can help, um, in the case of the marine environment, show what the impacts of future land use change might have on the marine environment and that can serve as a um, a talking point for people to think about how they want to use the land in the catchment and what they might be trading off in the future. One of the interesting social things that I'm getting out of this is that we're a maritime nation and regardless of whether we're a farm on the land we really care about what happens in our sea. And I've come from a very focused mechanistic um, biophysical uh, modelling perspective and I've, I've learnt a lot about the application of models and it's a bit of a big, bigger picture uh, perspective on how, how these models can be useful for making important decisions. Steve Markham has been the Environmental Policy Manager at the Tasman District Council for 18 years. He discusses ideas and the ICM research and what these approaches to environmental issues could mean for Council's policy and decision making in the future. Ideas is a decision support tool uh, that's still in a development phase but it's a potentially powerful tool to support catchment management decision making uh, in New Zealand uh, and, and elsewhere. Councils need to understand the implications in the long term for changes in catchment conditions, changes in the use of land and water. That is, part, that is an essential part of their environmental management responsibilities. So the decision making setting for spatial simulation models is actually very large. Councils, communities, economic sectors all have an interest 
in questing the future for their stake in catchment resources and the implications of resource development. The, the challenge here is to effectively engage across all community interests with management agencies such as councils. Now traditionally in the past there have been only a few set ways in which councils engage with their communities on environmental management issues. Um, they usually involve documentation and they're usually driven by time and law to reach decisions. The new technical approach includes tools that can assist in setting resource use limits, uh, standards, targets to achieve and ways of tracking the condition of the resource such as through the application of useful indicators. All of those technical methods can be enhanced with the inquiry power of simulation models. Simulation models I think are a potentially powerful tool to enable large numbers of people or interests within catchment settings to understand the implications of particular patterns of use or particular catchment management issues and some of the options that may well be able to be considered. And Steve says everyone's learned how useful simulation models can be for resource management. They've seen how collaborative thinking through complex natural situations and complex resource use uh, problems uh, with the aid of technical tools such as uh, spatial simulation models has enabled a way of integrated thinking to support decision making that really prior to the ICM research program was not well understood or accepted within the, the technical community. Bill Finlater is the CEO of the Nelson Regional Economic Development Agency. He discusses what he sees as the value of the ideas model and the ICM research program when considering the future. What we were looking for out of it was the Canadian model of the Genuine Progress Indicator or GPI and we wanted to be able to take that and compare that against the, the GDP so that when we looked at a project we could compare the two and if it stacked up economically but didn't stack up environmentally, we didn't really want to progress with that sort of project. We're all, and Nelson businesses, are really conscious of what we've got in this region. We've got something that's unique to the world, really, and we want to protect that. So we don't want to have economic growth for the sake of economy economic growth. We want to have things that will still protect our intrinsic values, but have growth if it's appropriate. We believe that these programs are fundamental to the ongoing growth of our region, and unless we do this, we're very, being very irresponsible, and we've got to protect this for our future people, our future generations.